session or your session i would say in love we trust so before we start i want to tell you that kwan uh, is an architect who took 14 years to complete his degree but <laughs> <laughs> he is a wild educator thank you uh, i can't i mean he's the founder of basurama and he will tell you all what exactly basurama means he has he is now the coordinator of imagine madral public art program there is so much he is working all over the world the you know the we uh, i got to meet him in paris we were doing a workshop we were attending a seminars and uh, in fact if you all of you remember we were when we were showing the project of varanasi the documentary i talked about this amazing uh, park which we were building so kwan was the man behind that park who work day we work with him day and night uh, he 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 i can tell you that you know he turns trash into treasure who is the person i would like to assist always though i keep bullying him uh, but uh, he yeah. is one of the you know one of the best sessions you will have you'll have you'll laugh and you will learn so much the, he is full of ideas which no one can even think of so i'll give the stage to kwan i am around uh kuan maybe f- i'll start with the first question what is the meaning of basurama you founded basurama hmm i think uh first of all i wanted to thank you thank you very much for inviting me and being here and also i'm uh, ready to be balling by by you <laughs> every, every time you need <laughs> so okay basurama basurama is a collective that we create with some uh, me and some friends um, almost 20 years ago in the when we were in the university and basurama ha- has two possible meanings okay basura in spanish is trash and ama is uh, part of the word panorama so it could be a panoramical view of trash so wide view of trash but ama at the same time means love so it could also means um love for the things that supposed to not to be useful anymore so love for trash My, my my mic was off sorry so yeah. there is lots of projects which you have done we in fact i have taken a lot of inspiration from your projects uh, would you like to show some of that and uh, maybe we can start with you know make uh, a preface basically to te- to do open our q and a and then you know if you can mm-hmm. show some of the works which you have been doing yeah i would like to go well, uh, i would like to do a presentation that is related to two things mainly mm-hmm. one is how to make visible the invisible and how to um take the potential out of the things that we think that are already death okay yeah okay so we can go for it i i will share my screen yes and we will go slowly but surely through all these different uh concepts absolutely so here we are this is a um, comic strip that i take from a good friend of basurama uh, miguel brieva it's a uh, an exceptional and unusual definition of trash but we love it so it says in spanish basura trash and what means trash trash is uh, according to miguel brieva uh, who is had a, a irony and a hit, uh, humorist um, everything that is produced by the human being with the due pass of the time currently it's just a matter of minutes so if we read it slowly everything that is produced by the human being so it cannot be a wood it cannot be a stone it cannot be an animal with the due pass of the time so what happens with the due pass of the time well things got broken or got wasted like a chair that got broken or the purpose of the for the, the, uh, the reason that for the reason of the construction of this object disappear for example the cd okay uh, nowadays is just a matter of minutes for example uh, we pay attention to our trash bin at least in uh, in spain in the last 30 years it has been transformed um, profoundly uh, 30 years ago you could have uh, the trash bin filled with uh, organic leftovers and sometimes with some objects like a t-shirt that got broken or um an iron or something like that but if you pay attention nowadays you can have you have in the trash bin a lot of things that has been used just once for example um 
uh, as you can see, this milk uh, package or papers are mainly plastic. For example, if we take a look at on what we buy in the shopping malls, etc., we've got this turnip. This turnip has its own skin, but at the same time, we see that it's covered or is surrounded uh, by this plastic package and also this tray. So, how much of this object are we going to use once we got home? And how much of this object are we going to throw it to the bin? How much of these 36 uh, cents are we paying for the turnip? And how much are we paying for the plastic that is going to end up in the trash as soon as we get home? Are we buying trash? Uh, furthermore, we go, we go by the street and we see a lot of people that comes and uh, give us trash for free. All these um, uh, brochure or flyers, leaflets that we take from the people and we keep with us 10 seconds, one minute, the time we need to get to a paper bin and throw it away. So people is giving us trash for free as well. So all these uh, individual and domestic gestures um, um, <clears throat> um, I mean, uh, our life is full of these uh, gestures and whenever we uh, where we consume and produce trash. And what happens if we multiply all these gestures by the people who is living in, for example, Bombay or who is living in India? Then we can realize that we have a, a global problem that affects us locally. Mm. Um, but the we can see. The whole issue of plastic and global warming is, you know, similar to what you're talking about. Here. Exactly. It's exactly the same situation that we're living all over and we are living in the last, uh, Yes, we can. Well, we re, we've been living this for decades, but now we can feel it everywhere. So, for example, uh, we can see also this happening everywhere and every time. What happens when we replace plates and glasses for disposals? Uh, we see it in music festivals. We see it in, uh, all over in birthdays and at every time and every t kind of uh, scales. But we don't have to forget. Uh, where all this trust comes from. So we have, first of all, industry and companies that have to uh, replace um, reusable glass bottles for one-use bottles, plastic bottles. Has replaced uh, materials such as uh, wood or metal that could be easily repaired for um, plastic. That is not that easy to repair and that can last in, in the trust for centuries or objects that used to last for, um, again, years and years. Now we've got this uh, obsolescence, no? That uh, a mobile phone that lasts for six months, one year, if we're lucky. So if we don't have to forget for uh, where all this trust comes from, we also have to pay attention where all this trust goes to. So the same way we've got uh, in our house, we hide the trust, for example, in Spain, we do it uh, under the sink or outside in the terrace. The city <laughs> has its own uh, place to hide all these trash, no? The carpet under the carpet. They hide it under the carpet. And we can see how the periphery, the outskirts of the city are filled by this dump surrounding the city. We have all these places where the, the, we try to hide all the trash that we produce and is produced by the way we consume and the way we consume that is produced by the way industry is making all these uh, new materials and objects. But not all the, not all the junk yards are, are, are there for mm, keeping all the trash. As we've seen, there are also spaces, junk spaces, we could say, which purpose has no, mm, has disappeared. Due to construction bubble, if we remember, the construction bubble in Spain was really a strike, a strike quite hard in the 2008 and 2012, but it was a global problem. Uh, we start to construct things that we never use. For example, motorways without cars. But we also construct, that's amazing, uh, um, airports with no uh, planes. 
So I remember when this robot landed in Mars, and in Spain we have this joke that says, uh, Mars 1, uh, Castellón Airport 0. So we had also uh, urbanization with no buildings. Juan, we live in India. You know that every inch is used. You have to ask with Varnasi. We don't understand these concepts where the airports are built and you don't see any planes. If we, there is a road is built, there is a traffic jam over there. Yeah, in fact, it happens to me that uh, I think uh, for, for sure uh, you're right. But at the same time, there's a lot of places where you, when you can see where that, that have a potential and they are abandoned. For example, the place where we construct the, um, the, park, the yeah. playground. Yeah, the self-made playground. Exactly. So there's a lot of places that you need to... That's why I think we need to open our the way we're looking at things because there's a lot of places that we don't know that they're already abandoned or that Absolutely. they were born death. All these examples you can find everywhere in the world, but if you look and pay attention, you can find also even in India. Absolutely. Yes, we have also, well, uh, buildings with no people living inside or uh, buildings with people living inside, but nowhere to go or nowhere to stay together. So we've seen how in many places of the in the world we are buying trash and we are getting used to live in junk spaces. So we talk about objects, we talk about places, territory, and I would like to talk also about a very important thing that is people, people and communities. How consumption and the way we consume things and places uh, is affecting to the people. If we pay attention, we the same way we only value the objects for the, their main purpose, we value people for their capacity to uh, produce money. We have forgotten about all the other competences that we all have. And we are so focused on uh, producing mm, money that we get rid of people as soon as they stop producing it. We've Why seen it. Is, are you showing yes. something? Yes. Yes. This, this is a pose. This is a dramatical pose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For talking about people. <laughs> all this is prepared to get to this point and to talk about people and then we will go forward. Okay. So <laughs> at this moment is, uh, for example, we've seen this uh, situation with people when we were talking about uh, architects. Once the construction bubble blows, uh, we see that we had a lot of architects that were no longer useful. And what happens when we've got a community or a population that is no longer useful? Usually we talk to them and we tell them to recyclate, no? Recycle, recycle themselves. So we blame them for their current situation and we start to stigmatize them. So they were the main responsible of the bubble. They have to take care of themselves. And stigmatizing a community or stigmatizing people is the best way to invisualize them. And once we invisualize someone, something, somewhere, then we can do whatever we want with them. We've seen this in this a uh, few days with the problem with life, mat Black Matters Life, Black Lives Matter. We've seen also with refugee camps. We've seen with uh, elder people, at least in also in, in Spain. And we've seen and with homeless people. So what we were thinking is uh, a world where all this is happening where we're consuming uh, raw materials, where we're consuming uh, territory, where we're consuming people in this way, I th think it's a world, I don't think it's a world we all deserve to live in. So we were thinking that the same way we want to visualize what is happening and how are we reacting to this consumption process, uh, we wanting to rethink on how can we take the potential in all these different situations. The same way we were having this definition of what was trust, there's another definition that I like a lot. Is, um, it says that uh, trust is the result of the lack of the imagination. So when we don't know, when we don't know how to do with someone, something, some uh, places, then it becomes trust. 
So it's something that is subjective. It's not a main property of a, an object. It's not a main property of a place. And it's not a main property of a person. So it's something that we set to something when we have no more imagination. We have no more space to, to this. So what can we do if we try to change our point of view? If we try to look at the things in a different way, at the reality. And now we got back to uh, objects. For example, here, we just do a, we just did a small gesture and we transform the objects. For example, transforming this wheel into a try for fruits or these plastic bags into a, uh, into a sofa. We fill it with air. And what happened if we do a, a, a transformation that is a little bit, uh, Deeper, for example, transforming this uh, fruit box into a 3D puzzle or these old CDs into a lamp, you know, understanding the materials you work with or transforming this pipe into an armchair that can resist outside as well. So as you see, we, we've got a lot of different possibilities. We just need to start uh, thinking in a different way and testing, exploring we can see also this uh, bunch of um, tires, old tires, uh, being transformed into um, um, urban furniture. And here we have a more complex example. This is in Santo Domingo. This is called a trash tsunami. Santo Domingo, they changed, they replaced the bottles for plastic bottles. These, pl these plastic bottles end up in the river, from the river to the sea, and from the sea to the beaches. So places were supposed to be full of people were all of a sudden abandoned due to the pollution. What we did was to visualize all these objects and create these spaces, this scenario. So um, there could be concerts and different activities and events. So we were activating an abandoned place, reusing the uh, object that was polluting this place. So again, visualizing and adding a little bit more of uh, action into this visualization can allow us to reinterpret a place, transform an abandoned place into, a, into an action place. Again, this is a place that was, um, uh, this is from uh, Madrid. They, the, the city council demolished a sports center and all of a sudden, instead of a sports, they ran out of money so they, could, they couldn't build again the, a new sports center. So instead of uh instead of a building people had a hole what we did was to construct this small place where all the neighbors were invited to propose uh, activities after two or three years an abandoned place became one of the most popular uh, cultural open air centers in madrid and run by uh, the citizens the neighbors again this is in lima peru you had an abandoned highlight, high line. Uh, they wanted to, to construct a, um, a public transport. They ran out of money again and it became, uh, open wound, open wound in the city for 20 years. What we did was to reuse the, these leftovers from trash, the, from cars, the wheels, et cetera, et cetera, work with local professionals, artists, graffitis, uh, sculptures, etc., and with the community. And all of a sudden, the community start to produce commonwealth. They produce, they create this place for everyone. So it was not just about producing money, but producing something that everyone could uh, enjoy, could take advantage of. One of the things that all the learners they get from this uh, experience, they replicate and they started to construct all over the, uh, the surroundings of Lima uh, parks like this. What we are saying, can, as we see, the, um, we, can, we can see, and this happens uh, not just in Santo Domingo, Madrid or Peru, but we can see it all over the world. For example, with the, working with trash pickers in, in Mexico, uh, in a refugee camp in Jordania, uh, housewives in uh, Paraguay, artists in uh, Sao Paulo, 
or uh, young architects in El Cairo, in Egypt. So we were seeing we had a, a global problem that affects us locally, and we think that we can do it the other way around, transform locally uh, our surroundings and trying to um, change the, the, global, the global situation. So this was a little bit uh, this uh, around these concepts and looking at different uh, projects that we've done uh, all over the world. And if you want, we can start talking about whatever. I want it to be quite fast to have time to to the Q and A uh, and to argue whatever. No, thank you so much. You showed so many things, and you know the whole. Uh emphasis on uh, partner youth khuan was that we also want to make uh, spaces for community which can be used you know coach for example and the other few uh, art institutes were built on that purpose that it will be used for all these artists i mean which if this is a pandemic if we had a place where we could so, sort of show off uh, all the works you guys have done and we could have them you know physically there so the whole plan is to make something it is by the community and for the community in exactly. fact i was looking for a presentation so i want to show what kwan uh, was doing in uh, uh, you know in mm. varanasi mm. i think one of the yes i will let you okay awesome so self made ground was the concept which kwan uh, just showed and he Here he is doing a TEDx talks. You have already you already know about him. So I'll straight away go. That's me. You all have seen me for three days. I'm sure you are like totally <laughs> tired of me. But he, here you see, while we were doing uh, you know recce for Varanasi, while we were looking for walls, we actually saw this abandoned place. There is a toilet, Sulab Shachale, we would call, <clears throat> which was you know made for the public, but no one ever used it. and finally it became a place where you know the all these druggists would like buy and uh, sell uh, drugs so the place was very dirty there was a lot of weed and this was place used to it was more like a dump ground so we took on the on this challenge and thought we will do something about it and i spoke to kuan about it and now the slide is not moving <laughs> <laughs> Okay, something has gone wrong, or what? Oh. I can't move the slide. Sorry. Can you see my screen? Eh, uh, no, I don't. I just see you. Okay, so I think it's gone. Uh, there is another way also where how I can show. So. I'll show my entire screen. I guess hmm. part is the photographs part, which we. Hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was the uh, location which you were seeing, and this was it was a huge ground, and this is just a half of it, and you know. it was more like a rectangular shape so we finally started meeting the uh, people from the uh, no, uh, what do you nagar palika and started talking to he is the guy who was uh, the parshad there he is the um, namami gange dg all came and helped us he was the ayukt nagar ayukt and there you see kuan making his you know we are in a workshop where they were actually repairing trucks tires everything under the sun there was uh, it comes under transportation they were repairing and we got people from the i mean from the ndmc um, from the nagar palika who were there and helped us so the first uh, of course the option was to what should be the choosing the material so there was a lot of abandoned things which these are the one thalas which you generally uh, all these people the workers uh, take on the on the road to put all the trash so But slowly, you know, they they get the rust and they are you know discarded. So they were lying. We thought maybe this is a, also a good option. Then we looked at all these poles which were there. So we chose some of that. There were there was so much trash which was just lying there. So we started planning and production. You see the welders here. These are the people who are actually working in the nagar palika who are 
helping us and uh, it was well not easy to you know make them work but the, at least after once they understood that what we wanted to do they were on board so people started coming here khuan can see you know taking the measurements and how we can use the tires we finally started making these uh, i if you can see there were sw swings which we were supposed to put the you know hangers on and kids could transportation was a big deal finally here you see these are not the people we have these are not the mazdoor they are not the laborers who are helping us these are the actual people from the community who finally took all the stuff and it was very difficult to take that heavy material but they all came and slowly you know we got this demolished that sulab shachalya and finally it looked like this and there khuan is trying to we are trying to install them uh, which we never did but i'm sure this but look at this space now what it was from earlier from what it it's now so slowly and steadily we started building on things the place looks pretty clean this is the final image when we you know left there was a wall which started building on here to keep the safety on hopefully um next uh, and you know the right now varnasi is again struggling with flood will be able to go back and do this um so this was what we you know what khuan was doing uh, in varanasi and there are lots of good ideas which he had showed to us and uh, there are questions now coming to i think uh, uh, ankit asking cleaning that place must have been a challenge mm -hmm. what were you saying khuan i think <laughs> i think the whole process is a challenge uh, yes, when you absolutely. get out of the uh, usual way of doing things for example comfort, yeah your comfort stage not only the comfort state but for example if you are using to cut and weld uh, like when we were working with the welders they were yes. using to repair uh, cars they were using to repair trucks etc etc so for them start thinking that they were constructing something different that was also a challenge yeah and start thinking on the purpose of the of the, of the oldest material the trash they think this is trash why are we working with this trash so i think that's the first challenge to transform people's mind also uh, the first challenge is also to look at that place that was full of with full of rubbish and think that that could be another thing that is also the first challenge and commonly is the one of the most difficult to do, to face because you have to transform and to imagine something that is not there and everyone is saying that no this is useless this is full of trash you cannot do anything so you have to face all that so i think i think the first challenge is you i mean is you payal yeah. thinking that that place has a potential so to me that's the the first step and the most important and then you have the next things that is who we can with what we can work with no absolutely we've got all this trash but this is trash and people remember when we were thinking when we were, we were walking on this mountain full of metal it was a paradise for us it was a paradise yeah. but for the administration that was a problem absolutely. and at the same moment at the very moment we decided to use it then administration start to look at it with value And do you remember the guy that comes and say no no you cannot use that it's ours yeah. <laughs> so it's true that at the same at the very first moment yet you see the potential you can yeah. somehow spread this the potential it's contagious i think creativity Absolutely. is also contagious and after a while when we were talking with people they started to think the same way we were doing and it was the energy was completely different remember when the welders started to see what can be done with the yeah, yeah. pipes and they all of a sudden they changed the way they were working with us okay. absolutely absolutely so i think those are the challenges and every time it's a challenge for example you come here and you say okay we are going to do this design and you design something very proper with your computer etc and then this is the real world and the real world you don't have a computer you have uh, the materials that you have and everything has start to change and to be capable to take advantage of it instead of yeah. blaming is i think it's also another challenge yeah it's best to you know start working instead of you know we all have been doing this for quite some time that we blame the administration we blame this and that and politicians i guess this is the time that you know get with on with your ideas as khuan very well said that you know it's all about here the, the way you look at things changes you know there are lots of diy projects which small projects which you will even see on the pinterest you know people changing mm -hmm. a bottle into a colorful thing maybe making it a lamp all these and this on more more like on a larger space or larger scale 
but that's how you know you start this is how mm-hmm. we you meet people you talk to them and if you uh, the whole plan is to have something with community you know when you leave uh, for example even when khuan left these boys were taking care of the place well they mm-hmm. missed him so much but you know the ownership left by khuan was with them they knew mm-hmm. they had to take care of him they knew that goats never should not come here now the dogs should not come here so all those are very small things but it matters you know the best part when you leave is all those memories and these people who are finally taking the ownership of the place mm-hmm. and also i think that curiosity is is one of the uh, main competencies you can use here for example when you meet someone you can say okay this is a welder i don't need him or you can say Oh, this guy knows how to transform metal into something completely different. Yeah. So, uh, how is it working? How? Ca- what can he do? What can he do? No. Uh, yeah. And at that moment, then your entire world opens and it's Absolutely. wider. So, I think um, curiosity is also a good thing to yes. to foster because it allows you to yes to connect with other people to increase the value of the project, etc., etc. Most of the time we are afraid of involving people because you said, okay, yes. I've got my project and it's perfect as it is. And if I introduce someone else, maybe he is going to change and it's going to be different. And we yeah. are afraid of this uncertainty. Yeah. But if instead yeah. of being afraid, we, we go for it and we yeah. think it's going to be better, then our world expands. And that's the way also to introduce community as well as a value and not as a problem or as a responsibility. I think it's a value. Don't be afraid to collaborate. Don't be afraid to take help. And there are a few questions which are coming. I'll just cleaning the place. And wow, awesome work! What have you all planned to have there? Any installation or paintings? Yes, we intend to. Maybe once we are gone, we are going back when the installations are done. Uh, there is someone you need a lot of support from the locals for such projects. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, towards the end, because most of the time when Kuan was there, we were spending the time in the workshop, and the locals were helping. Sort of, they had their own timings, and you know, but they sort of like uh, mold our uh, the timings for us. They were, they, I mean, we all faced problems, but the brighter side was that we were able to do it. That mm-hmm. we bought this. You remember Kuan when we uh, got uh, there on the boat. that breeze yeah. on the face on our like you know when you're sitting with all the things in the boat what that feeling and when the boys started coming yeah. finally yeah. it was like yes this we have done it you know the boys came to help they were just playing you know they were playing mm-hmm. cricket when the boat landed on the ghat and yeah. when they all started picking up things how this is how it happened yes i think there's there's something we we need to pay attention is 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 sometimes uh, when you are doing a community process Sometimes we think that everyone has to be on board at the very uh, same moment and at the very first time, and they have to stay in the in the boat for the whole process. But community has many different ways to to interact. So the I think the most important thing is to be capable to understand when and who wants to participate and is capable to uh, give something to the project or to extract something from the project. So it means that sometimes it's just A lot of people carrying things, and another time is people helping with the design. Another time is people cleaning. Another time yeah. is people uh, getting other people to uh, help, and all of this uh, helps to 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 make the project better. But it, we need to understand that everyone needs time to understand, needs time to see how to participate, needs time to see how with which intensity. they want to be part of the project and at yeah. certain point they can get out and then they can and come they can in get. again so i think it's very that important flexibility to, has to be there yeah exactly because every one of us is completely different exactly. we have our own lives so we need to understand also that not to be so yeah. strict with uh, what participation means huh? yeah yeah absolutely even i don't know if you sh- uh, showed that uh, balloon uh, installation which you were making imagine like you know we are live in this place there is so much trash there are people generally buy the veggies and take that polythene out and throw it so khuan did this huge installation just by sewing those you know polythenes together and it made a huge balloon and it was mm-hmm. a it was a brilliant success it was an installation just to show you know how much polyth bags which we are using and it just was like a little big mountain i was i, I won't say little but it was a big mountain 
which was then put the we put the air from yeah there it is khwan you should i mean you know the creativity doesn't need any breaks it can be from very small thing to a huge thing mm -hmm. you can go full screen also yeah yeah for example you've got this was also to talk about the pollution the plastic pollution in the seas in in cape town in south africa So we construct this with uh, reusing uh, trash, plastic that was thrown to the to trash, and we melt it and we build this huge space that has the equivalent of the plastic you could find in the seaside. No. Yeah. So I think it's it's, it's not again, going it's important to, yeah, yeah, to. That's fine. It's okay. We could see it. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's a potential in people. There's also potential in in um, in materials. No. Yes. Yes. There are. There is so much potential. Now I have seen it. You know, I I was always little skeptical, but I, when I was when Kwan was in Madrid and I was sharing those pictures with him. You're like yeah, yeah. I want this. Yeah, yeah. We can use this. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> how? But when we started working on it, I'm like, yeah. You know, any small thing can be used, and mm -hmm. you can make anything from any mm -hmm. trash. Like you know, it's it just you know, it's a flight of your creativity, which can take things uh, from nothing to something, and from something to uh, very useful things. And also, for example, there's one thing: uh, raising awareness about climate issues and pollution is really is really tough because we are all read of uh, hearing how the world is going to end. But uh, raising awareness through creativity and having fun is much easier. And you, through these kind of projects, you can have a lot of fun, and then people can start getting an yeah. idea of what is happening. You know, it should be a virus. But it should be a creativity virus. Like you touch mm -hmm. someone with creativity, and others gets in, and you know it becomes a chain. So everyone becomes creative and come with up, come up with ideas and start helping it. So we don't need coronavirus. Please go away. <laughs> we need the creativity virus here. So there is people Kuang who are asking, do you have a channel where one can see how to learn and change trash into something artistic? Any videos you want to talk about? I will share the website. And I think through the website you can find almost everything we have. I mean, we've got YouTube, we've got Vimeo, we've got a lot of uh, Facebook, Twitter. So I think if you link on the on the website, you can have all these things. Kwan, you have worked with you know Basurama. You have worked with the municipal corporation of uh, Madrid, and now you're working with an international organizations. So you are like you know making changes and jumping. What are the difference you see everywhere you go? What what do you think you know there is a change? You have worked in a government setup also, and you have worked mm -hmm. where you know you are independent individual trying to do something for community. Then you have an NGO setup who is trying to support you and you know they want to bring change. So what mm -hmm. is the parallel? You know how do you uh, fix your? <laughs> I think uh, there's. Again, I think the the world is changing really fast, and we are facing a lot of challenges right now. And we need people that can that is not afraid of uncertainty, and that likes to be creative. So I think everywhere I go, I think there's a lack of usually to of these two things: how to take advantage of the uncertainty, and how to be capable to make us us all collaborate to solve problems. So I think those are the common things. And the common challenge are always the same: how to start thinking in a different way. We've we've come, we've get to here thinking in a linear way, thinking that we can solve the problems by ourselves, that we can do it in a in, a, in the same way. And I think this 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 the moment has come to to open this mind and start to work intersectionally and introduce more people into the conversation. So. I'm sure this. I mean, even the scales are different: European scale or governmental scale or local scale. I think the challenge and the opportunities are the same, and the potential uh, is 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 there. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, uh, we have taken. Uh, it's five thirty. There are. If there is any question you would like to ask Juan, um, you can. 
Juan is also on Instagram, but uh, I don't think so. There are much works on the on that. <laughs> you can always go to Basurama. The he has already yeah. shared the link with you. You can see a lot of work there done by Basurama and done by Juan. Uh, you will get a lot of inspiration. How you can you know any abandoned place you can turn into with the help of community into something. uh so there is a lot and uh, thank you so much kuan for taking out time and being with us from madrid um anything else any ending note you want to take talk to your i mean audience no i think that's i just wanted to thank you because also for example these spaces that you are opening again are the most important thing I think to, this allows us to interact with other people, to engage with other people. I think it's a huge effort that you are doing. It's an amazing work, and I hope uh, I hope we can see you again in a yes, yes, near future. Yes. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. I Let's spent crazy yes. and lovely time there in India with you. It was yes, it was fun. Amazing. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, I hope we uh, you come back and spread the creativity virus. uh mm -hmm. in india and uh, we get to work again and thank you once again thank you so much for being mm -hmm. with us <laughs> thank you very much bye bye